Good after, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to round five of the Racecraft V8 Veterans Championship here at Silverstone this evening. My name's Brant, and alongside me we have Dan Yeaman for tonight. Dan, how are we this evening? Looking forward to another good round of racing. At least that's what we're certainly hoping for here tonight, of course, as always. Halfway there now, and about to start the halfway journey home here in this 19th season of the Racecraft Veterans V8, uh, Vet, uh, Racecraft Simulations V8 Veterans Championship. Let's not get those round the wrong way here tonight. But as you can see in the background, heading to, well, England, heading away from the States, as it were, as well. And, uh, Silverstone will be our home for this evening's action on the Grand Prix configuration uh, with the latest updates as well, Brant. So should be a good one that we've got here tonight with uh, plenty of straights to these cars to stretch their legs uh, being the main thing. But of course, also quite a few corners for them to have to worry about as well for good measure. Yeah, traditionally cars with high downforce run at this circuit. So it'll be interesting to see these wildly beastly v8 supercars with that minimal downforce how they'll take some of these quite high downforce areas through maggots beckett's and chapel so that'll be really interesting to see how we go tonight silverstone lots of straights as you said dan but also a lot of overtaking opportunities as well um significant amount of opportunities here so it should be a good race prime opportunity for some of those bigger names who may be having to come through the rear of the field uh to to make up some bulk positions tonight yeah, that it certainly will. And that'll be the important thing for us to watch out for here tonight, of course. So we'll be keeping our eyes open to see how everything plays out around this circuit. Been in action since 2011, and the big one being here tonight, of course, with this pit lane as well. Brant will be interesting to watch because you're able to get a bit of time actually on people in a safety car situation uh, with the way, of course, the pit lane cuts inside of the Vale, Chicane, and Club Corner there at the end of the lap. So, uh, definitely makes uh, for a short transit and time loss here in the pit lane which will be one to take note of here as well as i'll bring up for us now our race information that we're heading into for this evening and yeah 200 kilometer race bringing it down from the 300 k's we saw last week at watkins glen but it still means it's gonna be 34 laps around this iconic british circuit if you're caring about the championship and your points in the season break you're gonna have to make sure you get 26 laps done here tonight to satisfy the 75% requirement for classification. The main things also there being back to 50 litres of starting fuel, uh, but the full tank available means that we do have ourselves a fairly short opening stint uh, in terms of fuel numbers. And also the other big one being the fuel numbers themselves will vary wildly from driver to driver here with good opportunities for fuel saving, meaning it's pretty hard to pin down an exact number on how much fuel they're going to need and uh, how much that's going to affect their strategies. But we've tried at least with this graph here to get a bit of numbers on the board visually. That's exactly right. With with these long straights and these tight corners, it's going to be prime opportunity for some lifting and coasting, utilizing that draft to maybe extend that first stop, potentially even past lap 11. Uh, obviously, the critical number there being lap 22 in order to get home. Uh, depending on what strategy you use, you could come in as early um, as lap 9. So wild, wild fuel strategy game here tonight as you said dan obviously still those two compulsory pit stops that we're gonna need to undertake so it'll be a tale of two story three stories you can either split it 50 50 you can go early and long or you can go long and short so it'll be very interesting to see very much looking forward to seeing what fuel strategies play out especially with the lifting and coasting as i said through these long straights utilizing that draft these v8s punch an almighty hole into the air so should be a very strategic race tonight. No doubt action-packed, as it always has been through the past five rounds. Yeah, that's certainly the expectation. And, uh, I mean, yeah, the fuel numbers on this chart based on a 4.4 litres per lap fuel burn, which might definitely be, well, might be on the low side based on what I found in preparation for tonight. So definitely one of those things where it's maybe a little high. That's, but, yeah, lap 11, you can definitely fill it up and make it home uh, from there, which is kind of the interesting thing, I have to say. Um, because, well, in that case, you've still got a second compulsory stop, as you said, Brant, they have to do. And that might mean that the drivers are looking at trying to figure out something uh, there for themselves because they might not need to do all that much. The, the yellow line there, the late stop strategy, they certainly could add more fuel if they wanted there at lap 11, but what I've done there is the second stop late in the race. That's about as much fuel as I can get on board whilst covering a change of the four tyres, which I certainly would probably appreciate towards the end if they want to go hard and fast. Yeah, this circuit is an anti-clockwise circuit as well, which is kind of unusual to see. So 
Tyres will be a critical asset as well, and obviously with that short, short, with that very fast entry rather into pit lane and that short um, transit time, you're going to want to make sure that you're not wasting any time in the pit box taking tyres if you don't need it. But they're trying to make tyres last, you know, potentially 23 laps around here. That's going to be a big ask if you if you want to try and save save time on the pit stop. Yeah, that will be the other thing. Yeah, <laughs> tyre life being the big challenge, but we'll have to see how they make it work then in that case. Check conditions will be favourable with fixed weather uh, early morning time as well, so that might help them out there as well, but I guess it is certainly a wait and see situation. And well, speaking of things last week, bring up for you now the current championship standings as of four rounds complete, and also not counting the drop rounds yet that will be accounted towards the back half of the season. And the main thing there being Scott Gamble now with his third confirmed win of the season. Brandt jumps to the championship lead once more after a no-show from Darren Lobb. Sees him tumble down to the mid-pack, but that certainly will cancel back out uh, and around once we start talking about drop rounds, of course. But it does mean it puts him on the back foot for the time being, whilst we've got ourselves a tie there for fourth place between Dan Hall and Ken Ladder. And uh, some pretty close margins here in these uh, positions in and amongst the top ten. Yeah, that's exactly right. With Darren not racing and having to utilize that drop round for a zero point race may potentially prove critical later on in the season when those drop rounds really are starting to become, uh, you know, really important factors into that championship fight. But at the moment, Scott Gamble's got a 38 point margin over Chris Miller. Then we have another Fishy Motorsports car of Blake Delaney. But Chris Smart, 27th position there, he's gained 11 positions overall. So that's an absolute stellar performance from him last weekend to move up, you know, 11 spots in the top 10 there. We see some other couple, a few, couple other big movers as well, with Jeff Thomas and Stewie Hall gaining six positions and five positions respectively. However, as you said, Dan, we are only coming through to halfway through the championship. So a lot, lot of, lot, lot of play to, um, lot of races to occur yet and a lot to play out. Back to speaking of the schedule, let's bring it up on screen here for us all now and yeah, see where we've gone and where we're going next. So, yeah, started back on the 21st of March. Scott Gamble leading Darren Lobb home at Laguna Seca uh, for that one. Ken Ladder, I believe, in third place. And off to Le Mans where uh, massive dramas for, for Scotty Gamble on, on the in, the, uh, in the race with the internet dropout and such. Did end up winning across the line, but post-race penalties uh, meant that he did not uh, get the official win at the end of it all. In fact, that one, I believe, went to one of the Fishy Motorsports cars. Let me get that information up in the background real quick if I can find it in a pinch, which would be pretty handy. No, unfortunately, we didn't get that one there. It's up on the results, but it'll actually come through here on the bottom of the ticker in a little bit. Phillip Island, Gamble did win that one across the line and no issues there, and won again last week at Watkins Glen. So he's officially three from four, almost effectively four from four so far this season. And uh, yeah, looking to go strong. And then yeah, looking to this back half of the championship. We race again next week. We are doing an Anzac Day race uh, here, going off to the Red Bull ring for that one. So there we go, Le Mans, the results there, the bottom ticker. So Blake Delady, officially the round winner in round two. Dan Hall came home second with Chris Miller promoted to third. So that's how that one worked. But yeah, second half of the season, certainly a, a variety of, and a mix of tracks, but starting off with a draft heavy circuit in the Red Bull ring. Then we move to Sonoma, which will be a tight and twisty little circuit for these honking great supercars. Suzuka, everyone, you either love it or you hate it. There is no in between. Uh, so it'll be a good challenge for these supercars. Um, Portimao and then Jerez. So a couple of European circuits to finish off the series with some nice flowing circuits there as well. So second half of the season, absolutely looking the goods with some pretty solid races in there as well with Portimao being a 250 kilometer race so a lot of work for these guys yet that's for sure yeah there certainly is well we'll get back to the racing action in about five or six minutes time once the grid is settled and ready to rock and roll but we do have one thing special for this week although unfortunately it's uh Unfortunately, a bit of a, a, a sour, well, sour, but unfortunately, a bit of a, a negative note in the world around us, of course, uh, the, the knife attack at uh, the Westfield uh, Bondi Junction shopping centre, uh, unfortunately, hitting home with a lot of families. And actually, uh, a moment, we now are going to bring Michael Stewart of the Hypersonic Racing 919 uh, into the comms box. And uh, Michael, unfortunately, uh, not the opportunity and reason we'd like to talk to you, unfortunately, but how are you holding up this week and a chance to also perhaps um, keep us updated on how the Bale and Stewart Foundation is going at the moment? 
Yeah, mate. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. And obviously, with everything that's been going on in Sydney and also locally up here, we've had a couple of staffings as well, believe it or not. Um, yeah, it it just takes you back to a dark place. It takes, takes us back to that night. Um, but keeping busy with the foundation. So uh, this week I had a presentation um, with uh, one of the high schools up here and had two groups and uh, the teachers and the students wanted, liked it so much that they want me back for a, a parent night. So on the 1st of May, I'll be going back to the school to have a chat to the parents about knife crime and what they can do to keep an eye on their kids. Yeah. Glad to hear that, that there's able to make continue to make a contribution. I have to say it's it's incredible to hear your story and how you guys have been able to keep doing your part to help out, unfortunately, after you know, your personal loss. But how's it looking now this year? We, as you said, unfortunately, a bit of an unfortunate series of, uh, of incidents. We didn't even hear about the ones up on uh, up around your area, unfortunately. But um, how are things looking, hopefully, on, on the positive side as we go forward into this year? Things planned at this stage will just be a case of continuing your education work and seeing what comes your way. Yeah, oh, look, uh, we, you know, the, the foundation was, um, had been recognised by the Queensland Government and we got um, some reasonable funding um, so we can grow. Uh, so as a part of that, we've got a, um, a like a, a really nice golf day coming up in July, um, which is a, you know, sort of a corporate luxury golf day. Um, everything's included, breakfast, lunches, prizes, um, giving a, um, there's possibility of winning a car, giving away a spa on the day, um, luxury accommodation packages being given away. So yeah, it, it, we're pretty excited that that's all come together. And then further down the field in September, like we do every year is the Balin Stewart um, or the Balin Forever Festival, which is a music festival. And, you know, across the country, a lot of festivals are being cancelled and with the extra funding from the government, it, it enables us to uh, attract uh, a, a better higher end um, frontline act. Um, but we've got a couple of um, unearthed, Triple J Unearth uh, bands that are um already committed and um a couple of solo artists so yeah it's gonna be great mate like um so yeah on to bigger and better things uh, to give you an idea out of the next 12 weeks um i'm booked 11 weeks um so pretty busy on the educational side so yeah getting stuck into it well, that's glad to hear that indeed and then again commiserations uh, once again as we continue to approach yeah, the anniversary of Valen's passing uh, Michael from all of us here at SimSpeed TV um, and yeah congratulations once again but as we can see they're yeah, about to head to the grid so better let you get ready to go racing tonight and uh, just one thing I want to thank all the drivers for you know supporting and putting um, Valen on their cars it's awesome indeed yeah a um, couple of drivers and also, the admin uh, able to uh, get Balin's, get the bit, uh, bit in the blade for Balin and the Balin Stewart Foundation logos on the cars. We'll let you go, Michael. Thanks for chatting with us. Thank you. And all the best out there tonight. And with that, Brant, we now turn our attention towards the grid for this evening's race here at Silverstone. 34 laps coming our way, and it's Scott Gamble once again on the pole position with Michael Whiting going to start alongside him here tonight in the Fishy Motorsports 520. It'll be Matt van der Kran and Ken Ladder starting out of row number two. For this one, you can see here, time's pretty tight in this second and third row. Paul Warwick and Bruce Sanek will start out of row three to make it our top six here for this one. And then Tim Nickel and Chad Lewis off of seventh and eighth inside half a second there of Gamble's time. But John Latham and Jeff Thomas going to round out our top ten in the first quarter or so of the field here, Brand. Yeah, in P11, we have Tony Stone Street and Chris Miller from Fishing Motorsports in P11 and 12. Dean Flavelle and Craig Friend in P13 and 14. Two super cheap auto cars line astern. Robbie Griffiths from Fishy Motorsports in P15. And David Nash from 801 Sim Racing in P16 in the 911. Another ERT car of Dan Hall and David Kirby starting from P17 and P18 respectively. Chris Smart and Jason Fewens round out our top 20. Still only 7 tenths of a second covering the entire field from that top 20 um, cars, Dan. 
It's actually kind of crazy because we were just over half a second once we got the Jeff Thomas in P10. It is tight from there on out. We keep on going to Damien Cairns and Michael Stewart first cars on row number 11 there with 23rd place in behind. Going to be in the hands of Stewie Hall with Rob Criso alongside him in the 808 for Frog League Juiced Racing uh, there in 24th. Row 13 will have Mark Poynton and Rick Sieber to make that an all Frog League Juiced Racing lineup there and make it 26 cars inside a second. Yes, we do leave it there as we jump over the one second barrier from Scott Gamble's pole time. Travis Hunt and Scott Mackay on the 14th row of this one here tonight. Our top 30 going to be rounded out by Ricky Hyde and Scotty Van Loom. We'll speed through the last couple of cars here in Scott McCune and Stephen Varga. And then in behind them on row number 17, Darren Goosey, Christopher Blanchard. 18th row of Damon Fisher and Chad Vigger. 19th row is going to go Jamie Knight and Rick Vigger with Michael Queen, Paul Burns. Uh, going to round out our 40 cars at set of time. Mike Taliancic and Brenton O'Brien look like they've got no time, but they might just join us here in the server brand to get this race underway in a couple of seconds time. Absolutely massive grid here, 41 cars. You can see they're having to go around the final corner to grid up. So lots of shenanigans to unfold. We'll have to hold our breath as they go down into turn one um, as they get through maggots and bigots for the first lap as we are nearly ready for race start here. And away we're off now, officially. For round five of the V8 Veterans Supercars Series. Scott Gamble leads through turn one safely. Through turn two. Everyone looks like they're through there cleanly so far as we've got one car cutting the track back in the background there. Rounding turn two into turn three. Scott Gamble Still maintaining that lead as they're side by side there for P3 and P4. Slowly start to sort ourselves out now. Make way down the Wellington Street for the first time here. Got ourselves two, three wide as oh, Brenton O'Brien's on the radios. How's that? Christian Smart up the inside. Something fierce on that there. Possibly being, well, it's one of our double Kirby's in front of him. Oh. Kirby around the 307. But Dave Kirby's going to end up sideways across the track. Gets straightened back up pretty much by uh, his teammate there, who's lost his rear bump, lost the complete rear end of the triple nine as well. As oh, we got one of the oh, Michael Stewart, unfortunately, having just spoken to him, the front end of the 919 hypersonic racing car is looking uh, a little worse for wear, unfortunately. There, so we've had a yeah, complete calamity further on back in the pack here, uh, Brant, and to try and get this opening lap uh, sorted out here. Yeah, that was unfortunate. That was the two fishy cars actually coming together there. And Michael Stewart, the 919, just the innocent bystander. Oh, steering broken on that 301 fishy motorsport car as we see him cut the circuit there. Not ideal for that to happen at all. 307, my apologies. So the two team cars coming together and unfortunately the 919 hypersonic car was the innocent bystander there. As we move back up the front, Scott Gamble leads from Michael Whiting and Matt Vandercran is the top three. However, Ken Ladder is right on the tail of that 180 car. We've been told a bit of drama to go watch out for. So we'll queue up a couple of Racecraft simulations replays from that opening lap. Cold is there for having a bit of a moment getting our, our timing and scoring uh, reset and ready to roll. As Kirby is in the lane here, uh, according to our systems and indeed the 307 has come down now. So that we'll see him unfortunately not tick off a compulsory pit stop of course being lap one. Have to wait till the end of lap two before you can tick a compulsory stop off the board. So we'll still have to do two more stops in this race, which definitely puts him on the back foot here. Yeah, that's not, not ideal, um, especially having to use your fast repair on lap one of a 34 lap race. So definitely puts him on the back foot, that's for sure. But as we're on board with Ken Ladder, coming down off the hangar straight into Maggots and Beckett's here. These fast left right sections of corners that really rely on that downforce stand that we were talking about earlier on so it'll happen these boys will have to be muscling these big supercars around around those corners and Ken is still sitting right on the rear of the 180 of Matt Vandercran. Yeah they're coming past the old uh, start finish line here and uh, in the cops corner they'll go now working our way up towards uh, Maggots and Beckett's now as we are uh, yeah, and trying to hassle Matt Vandercran, podium get up from our like, well, our round last week at Watkins Glen, first time for the season. But not the first time we've talked to the 180 machine uh, in this one here. As we look here, we've got ourselves a bit more of a battle just in behind here. This is sitting in and around P6. Bruce Tannock leads the group, and then 
ours this year, basically all still tucked together as it's uh, right now going to be Tim Nickel under some fire here from John Latham down into, uh, well, at the end of the hangar straight there. Pardon me, I had to get my corner names uh, sorted out and ready to go for this one here. But it looks like it'll be Latham to the inside. Nathan Latham ahead and gets that spot there nice and tidy. Chad Lewis wants a spot piece of the pie to come down into the Vale chicane, but he can't get there. Gets checked up hard as a result. Jeff Thomas to the inside at the second part in the exit of Vale. As we come through club, it'll be a side-by-side -side run for these cars. Brent, and it looks like Lewis knows ahead here on the 43, but now we've got to go the long way around it. Abby, as we've got, look at it, it's fanning out in the background. That's David Nash, Dan Hall, and Robbie Griffiths as we come into Turn 1 here. Just nearly three wide into Turn 1 there, Dan. That is not ideal. Side by side, they're sketchy enough, let alone trying to make it three wide, but thankfully they backed out of it. This battle pack must just go on and oh, on. Oh, Dan Hall! Not a... 4-6-2 four, six, four, six, has been spun. He met Dan Hall manages to correct it as they resume. Whoa! That. Oh, we've got another crash at the foreground Tannic. there as well. It's Bruce Tannock and John Latham have come together all of a sudden here. So, oh man, the replay queue now is starting to come up. As yet, that's straight into the uh, the radio reports from the guys there. As we've had all kinds of hell, fire, and brimstone, it seems. I'll we'll get going once again now as they uh, head down the Wellington. Uh, but my word, what has caused that one there? And oh, just as uh, Tank wanted to get going again, Mike Teleantich is back in the championship. He's going to get a bit of a bump for his troubles there, it seems. Defending series champ has missed the past two, if not three weeks, uh, Brent. So it's been a bit of an AFK absence for him and way at the back of the field having to try and carve his way forward as well for good measure. It's going to be a rough night if anything there is to go by. Yeah, Mike's up nine spots so far, but what has gone on with these lads tonight? The past few rounds, with the last four rounds, we've seen them be pretty well behaved, but tonight they seem to have, seem to have released the shackles, and, um, well, yeah, there's some aggression out there at the moment. That's probably about three or four accidents we've now seen as we go back to the replay here of the John Latham incident. Oh, no. So, ooh, Bruce Tannock there. Let's try and get on board here with John Latham before it happens. See if we can piece this one together, but it's not looking too pretty there, I have to say. So, see here, gets alongside and around the outside. We come out of uh, uh, the village here, but, oh, that doesn't look too good in case of Latham just coming across the nose, it seems, uh, of the 24, which uh, means that they end up stuck together there on the outside of the circuit. There's, that was the, Yeah, that uh, was the a very, very strange one there. That's, yeah, I think... John Latham there was definitely, I think, the um, unfortunate victim there. Definitely not intentional at all. Oh, as oh! they continue, Latham's gone into turn one. Oh, my word. We butchery picked them straight up again here on the live feed, and it's absolute carnage here. Start a lap four. And I still haven't got a chance to go back to the lap one, lap two replays and such as well. So, absolute chaos now befalling these drivers out here is... Yep, that's immediately beamed into race control, and they're going to uh, check that one in there, it seems. And, uh, oh, my word. Yeah, Scotty Van Loon's dropping down the order, which is because he's in the way out in the grass on the Wellington Street. It's just it's just a bloodbath every single which way I look here, Brand. Yeah, that's, that's been a big hit for that 410 cube entry car. The entire left-hand side has been absolutely slammed into that tyre barrier there, so... That's unfortunate for Scotty Van Loon. But yeah, these boys tonight, Scott, um, to say they've released the shackles is an understatement. It'll be interesting to see race control's um, verdict of that John Latham incident. But that, yeah, definitely just seemed to be... Let's see, this is the cube. Oh, side-by-side -side contact. Bounces and of... straight at that left-hand side, as we saw. So. so bounced off of Stephen Varga there, Brent. That's the QPR 868 that... Got in hang on it. Oh, don't tell me we had something happening up ahead here, which we in the, oh yep, we did have ourselves something happening there. Oh Michael Stewart's even more bedlam here. Let's try and pick this up here. So we've got smart to the inside. That angle doesn't really help us, but it definitely looks rough with a biff and barge. So just keeps on going here, it seems, tonight. As we go back to the live feed, and yeah, they're still all compressed together here has come to the start of lap number five in this race. I think by the time we go through these replays, Dan, we'll be halfway through the damn race. So, um, 
If the guys could just calm down and give us a moment to breathe, that'd be absolutely fantastic as we see this absolutely massive battle pack as we're riding along here with the 919. Um, so we move back up to the 602, who is... This was roughly where it starts. Uh, I would, I, I want to say yes, as we see a move being made in the background there as well. Yes. It's essentially up the inside, but this is essentially about where it starts. So we see another hypersonic car, the 77 entry there of Scott McCune. So they're side by side, two by two. And they get through here cleanly, coming down into club corner. And... Yes, yeah, still side by side. Oh, Jamie, not having a bit oh. of a moment there on the power. Bring it on to the old front straight. That's going to put the Q right the, up. Yeah. Yeah. Over the door for the 77 here. The Silex just to kind of stand by, but the 044 is right there too of Tony Stone Street. So, um, yeah, busy, busy battle pack. Busy, busy racetrack tonight. Race Control already going to have their work cut out for them. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've been hearing practical non-stop chatter on the radio about all of those incidents there. So this train, yeah, effectively back to Tally in 28. So seven cars now is the train. In fact, Tally looks like he's looking for some moves towards the back of the pack. Not quite. He's, uh, he's almost there, but not quite. And realistically, the, the pack, you could argue, keeps going is further in it. Stephen Varga now looking to defend from Scott McKay as they you know, come off the end of the hangar straight away there. Bring themselves back into the Vale chicane once more. That looks like a single file for this pack for now uh, at this stage and once again Scott Gamble. It's not much yet but he's starting to open a margin to Michael Whining in behind him there for the race lead. You can see the gap currently at 1.3 seconds and Saying that, Robbie Griffiths is tumbling down the order. What's happened to the 060? Oh no, he's off. On the exit of turns one and two. Very slow as well. Is he looking to try and pull this over at a Marshall post so we don't have a safety car? Or has there been a hardware failure here? Because he's just meandering off he's, into he's just race stopped one. and requested. He's just stopped and requested a tow. That's what the... So we might just get the safety car here because... That's pretty solid looking arm car at that point at the circuit. So we'll wait to see what race control will make of it there because he is not too far away from the gap there. But we'll go back to our leaders. They've already come round cops and the magazine. No, we are staying green here, Brant. The safety car will not be deployed here on lap number six. Yeah, sparkle from race control. So the key thing to note here, Dan, is generally, you know, that draft is about one to one, one to one and a half seconds range for, for, for most cars on iRacing. Scotty Gamble's managed to just be on the verge of breaching that, which means Michael Whiting won't have that help from him to pull him away from the 269. So Whiting, if he's not careful here, will actually start to come under threat by the 269 for P3, but they've got quite a nice margin back to the 180 car P4. Uh, they certainly do. Uh, comfortably at this stage, you know, it's going to be yeah, three drivers fighting it out at this stage. Although early days for sure in this race. And also don't forget, we have ourselves uh, a Chubby Buns Burgers driver of the day to figure out uh, from all of this as well. Uh, so we see here uh, Griffiths down on the pit lane with that toe. They can to get back out on track. And Stewie Hall, the 49 machine, is deep in the pits. and. Been in there for a minute and a half, so we'll try and figure out where he picked up his damage, but unfortunately that looks to be parked for now. Uh, on lap seven, car drivers probably have between another two to four laps of fuel left in this thing as Dan Hall's under some pressure from David Nash here. These two are still going in at Brant after tangling right there uh, about three laps ago. And Hall very much on the defensive at this stage. Absolutely, and we can see that that defensive driving by Hall is really starting to impact his exits with the 911 really being able to take those optimal race lines and straighten that corner up and get the solid runs on the 462. Down these long straights as we see Nash poking his nose up the inside but thinks better of it. Don't want to have another contact like we did before because they've also got the that behind them there that is following the line astern. 
Awesome. On the screen for you here is the 802 Ricky High next to the 801 Sim Racing entries. Teammate to David Nash. So Nash is in that unenviable, unenviable position where you've got to attack, but you've also got to watch the car behind. But the benefit, as you said, is that Hyde is a teammate. So they'll be trying to work together. And if that 911 can go through, I can almost guarantee you down that that 802 will try and follow suit as well. Paul Burns down onto the lane as well in the 110. It's already over a minute stop. There's Stu Hall approaching across the three minute stop threshold. I don't think we'll be seeing him back out at this stage if that's the case as well. There's a come in here, end of the hangar straight. You can see here, sixth gear back to third. So they're not fully pulling it up, and then it's a short run here, but up into fifth gear once again, and then back down to second. Not going to use first yet this time. And then just really gently leaning on the cars here already at this stage, and then try and power out through club, get themselves onto this uh, start finish straightaway sections. But car to the pits, Michael Quain from dropping down the order now. He'll be the first car in, it seems, for a stop. Speaking of the chubby bub, chubby burgers, driver of the night, you know, if we look down at 13th, 14th and 15th alone, we've got Crisdale, Sibra and Hunt making up 11, 12 and 12 spots respectively. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers. Jamie McKnight is up 16 positions as well. So we're going to have our work cut out trying to figure out who are we going to give the drop of the night to as we see Michael Quayne still in the pit lane at the moment. Jamie McKnight and Mike Taliancic leading the positions gained on 16, 16 positions each. So we're looking at well over 50 positions gained just between those five cars there alone. So that's a yeah, significant number of overtakes just in eight laps alone, Dan. Yep, it's been pretty crazy out there as a have a penalty. It's come through from race control. Fortunately for Bruce Tannock, it's not one that he's going to like seeing. He gives it with John Latham back on lap three, has been deemed his fault. So he will be transiting the pit lane for an additional time in this night, in this race so far, which is not going to help things, that's for sure. And uh, you can see here, he's uh, currently down in 28th spot, has not made a pit stop, Brandt, and he's going to have to uh, trundle down the lane before getting his two compulsory stops for the night done at this stage. That's going to be a real tough one there for Bruce. So yeah, that, that'll, that'll pretty much call the B night, Bruce's night, night, night done, unfortunately, with, you know, having to take that 30, 40 second trundle down pit lane, followed by, you know, even longer in the pits to do his two compulsory stops. So, unfortunate there for the one, two, three, um, but, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a well justified penalty as we see Bruce coming down into pit lane now, not wasting any time getting that penalty over and done with to focus on the racing ahead. So we'll pick up another battle on track here. Matt Vandekran currently in P4, but he's losing the touch of the top three behind the head. And he's got Paul Warwick trying to bear on down as well. If we compare the last couple of laps here for these two drivers, uh, it's definitely looking like, ah, actually interesting to see there. So actually in the last three laps, it's been fairly steady and it's only a minor advantage to Warwick when you go three laps in a row. As you see here, a host of drivers into lap eight coming to the pit lane. So drivers perhaps burning a little more fuel than we expected. Lap nine was sort of like, this is the critical lap over. You fill the tank here, then you, you're done. For, you just have to do one stop. And it doesn't have to be much, if anything. Uh, at this stage, 30 plus seconds. That is basically a full tank fill. So, so we, I think we might have drivers here, Brent, who are going to have a try at basically filling the car now and then just have to do a stop and literally go up on the jacks, take bare minimum, I think it's half a litre of fuel, and then they'll be uh, they'll be sorted for the race. Yeah, the issue there, Dan, is obviously that tyre longevity uh, with these long, long protracted corners, um, you know, absolutely clobbering the the tyres the on these supercars. So that's going to have to be something they manage as well. Uh, but, hey, it's, it's good to see people trying something different. If you're down the bottom of the pack or the bottom half of the field, why not try something different? Variety is the spice of life. No point being uh, a processional race. As we see the 40, was that the 43 peel off in yep. the pit lane? It was Jeff Thomas. Yep. Just as I was going to grab him uh, <laughs> for um, the Zoom feed, we'll, grab, we'll get Jeff back later on. 
uh, in this race, I think, is going to be the play there tonight. It seems as he's not the only one in here at the end of lap nine. Damien Cairns, Travis Hunt, Ricky Hyde all coming in as well. Plus a few more further on back. Looks like Christian uh, Scott McCune. So again, the biggest thing is with the pit lane here at Silverson, drivers coming into the pit lane will gain positions, as I said here, yeah, with the Vale and Club uh, chicanes and corner and the way that the pit lane cuts inside of them all. It is quite an interesting thing in the pit lane, is, yeah, because you gain spots, Brent, uh, going on the pit lane before, of course, the drivers build speed on at the start, finish straight. They will, of course, then eventually get back past them. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So a little bit... That, that pit lane, especially here, will 1v1, that could potentially win or lose the race uh, for, 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 for the leaders. If, if they can gain enough time coming into it, maybe sneak up behind the leader. Um, you know, there's definitely some time to be gained here as we're seeing pit stops of, we've seen a very short pit stop there from Mark, Mark Poynton, only 18.7 seconds. So Mark potentially going the opposite way here. We're seeing some cars with nearly 30 second pit stops and others around that mid 20 seconds. But Mark is definitely the, um, the, the shortest stop I've seen to date as we see that 29 car actually get a points penalty for a lap one incident just coming through from race control there, Dan. Yeah, to be precise, it was apparently not holding the brakes uh, in something that happened on lap one, unfortunately, for the 29. So if we get a chance, we probably are going to have to go to it sooner or later than others. I'll be lost, buried in the ether. As we see here, yep, so 10 laps. Looks like that's more about the number for everyone here. Yep, one top four. Five. Well, not all of the top eight, as it will be uh, Tim Nickel, Chris Miller, and one more driver there at the back of the group. That will be Dean Flavel coming through here. So those guys do have 11 laps of fuel in the starting tank. The leading drivers are burning more like 10 laps on 50 litres. So you're on the math. It's a uh, not quite five litres a lap, but in fact it's, it's going to be, have to be less because they have to have some fuel left in it, but clearly not comfortable or confident in getting an 11th lap out of what fuel they started on here tonight. Yeah, just watching these pit stop times at the moment to see what the top four cars are electing to do here. At the moment as we've seen... Scott Gamble taking 26.3 seconds of fuel, Ken Ladder 25, Michael Wadding 26.6, Paul Warwick 24.7, Van der 26.7, Chad Lewis 31.6 seconds. So Chad taking the most fuel of anyone I've seen tonight. The other cars nearly fueling it up. Um, so, you know, probably, Dan, what you'll find is they'll be taking those tyres, and the moment those tyres are done is when these cars will be dropping. Yeah, that 30 odd seconds, that's the 30, the 30 second stop, you're over 65, 70 litres of fuel added. So probably going to have to still add about 25 to 30 litres of fuel at the second stop, which will be about you know, almost double what you need to uh, cover a tyre change here. But that will certainly put them in a good position to go into uh, late 20s, if not early 30s on lap. So not, not early 30s, that won't, that won't go that far. They'll be in the early to mid 20s. Uh, before these guys come back into the pits. So probably looking to go a little more than even uh, at this stage. We see Tim Nickel, Chris Miller, Dean Flavel, Nash, Natalie Ansic, Mokai. The top six cars are the cars that are yet to hit. So it'll be interesting to see what these guys do. Do they take track position as we see top two, three, they'll all be in this lap surely, there's no way they can go another lap, that would just be insane fuel saving to try and squeeze out what would be 12 laps of fuel top That's four of the pit lane yep, Teleantich, McKay should also come in, so that will reset the order, and yep, Scott Gamble will now start to will reclaim the race lead, as he had for that opening stint, and has led from the start at this stage will be critical to see those drivers here got that extra lap of fuel in how much they can make use of that as we're on board here with Jeff Thomas first of drivers that we're going to pick up during the race at least on Zoom for tonight let's have a look at the lap here of the Silverson Grand Prix circuit in these V8s Brant so turns one and two you can see that big lift for Thomas as the front end refuses to really offer him a huge amount and work it back down to second gear here for turn three as we come in to uh, the village and 
then see, does he go for first? No, he'll keep it in second. As I then try and get the car pointed back out the right way and on the power for the Wellington straight away here. So we go down this very, very long straight down through, hang straight under the bridge. Down back to third as he had 43 hours. Bit of a wiggle mid corner there on the entry as well. All the way out over to the curb. Trying to get these cars to do what they want. As we come down past the old pit exit, pit entry rather, sorry. Down under the old front straight. To the corner where Hamilton and Max and Verstappen had their infamous crash. Now as we head down into Maggots and Beckett's, these very high, very high speed corners. The, car, the 43 looks incredibly settled through this part of the circuit. Absolutely, a bit of a wiggle there off the exit, but that car through Maggots and Beckett's then looks very, very well behaved. Keeping it nice and tidy and uh, not pushing it too hard here as they'll almost hit the red line at just over 260 k's an hour as they bring it in to start. And then again, leaning on the tyres here, that's for sure. Uh, and then bring it back around to the Vale and Club once more. That's what a lap of Silverstone looks like here uh, in these V8s. And now you can see in behind Jeff Thompson, but Paul Warwick really looking to muscle here. And uh, you thought the 43 was looking strong. It looks like the 050 has got better tyres uh, on it at this stage and getting better drive out of the slower turns. So get lap 13 underway and these two fight for the spot in, well, the top four actually, because they're both in the five. Yeah, these guys have been stuck together for most of the race, but the 050 really coming into its own in this mid stint. As we track swap to the triple six fishy motorsports car of Chris Miller. Bit of a battle pack starting to form here. Currently four cars up to potentially six cars. Um, should, the ju should the juiced car work their way up to them at this point in time. But we're on board looking at the rear of Chris Miller back towards Friend. He's only 0.4 of a second behind. So absolutely going to be getting that critical slipstream down these long straights. Watch because friend Craig just getting a little loose, and as a result, is out of shape. Unless he can get it hooked back nicely for the exit here, that might work out okay. But definitely heated the rear tires up a little bit more than he would have liked, I'm sure. As he gets back on the power, so the old start for him straight away here. And uh, yeah, I actually need to learn these corners. Yeah, Brooklyn's Luffield Woodcote here in the cops. I can remember that one at least <laughs> for the very much. And then bring it on down to Maggots, Beckett's, and Chapel here. So this battle pack, we'll see how this goes as they work their way uh, around the circuit. As you actually see here, Chris is catching up a little bit to, uh, no pardon me, it's lap traffic, unfortunately, uh, for him. As, well, the day is getting worse for uh, Bruce Tannock. He's had another drive-through incident uh, on lap one, which I believe was with, as you know, it was, it was with John Latham a second time. Uh, unfortunately, they've been two drive-throughs in this race. So it's been a, uh, a night, for, uh, basically a night from hell, it seems, uh, at this this stage, Grant for the 123. In and out though, and back out racing uh, from what I can see. And here's the last car though on the lead lap. Scott Gamble not too far behind. Yeah, unfortunate for Bruce. Um, but on the plus side, still got his drop round to use. So um, yeah, definitely will be interesting to see. Um, however, that fishy car that we saw get tangled with and have no boot, as we see on the screen here, did not. But they have a, they do have a fast repair, do they not, for this series? They do indeed. It looks like yep. it's going to be a case of saving it for something a little bigger, perhaps. Christian Smart making the car work for him at this point in the race. And in fact, we look at it here. How many positions has he gained so far tonight? He's still up three spots, so uh, all things considered. Uh, looks like it's uh, not hurting him too much, apparently, uh, in the grand scheme of things. So he'll carry on and keep on racing. But Ricky yeah, Hyde, Troy Stone's written down in hands in behind us. There's been a bit of action up ahead. A redress order came in from race control. It shuffled this pack that we were looking at uh, earlier around quite a bit. 
It'll be interesting to see where that redress order came from, but also the lap traffic will be having a significant um, significant play in this battle pack as well. Um, and that's going to be the, the difficult thing that these front cars now need to manage is getting past these lapped cars in a clean, efficient and fast manner. Uh, remembering that race control will look at them at, 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 at front runners very poorly if, if they do spin around those back markers. So it's really important that these boys um, get past as quickly as can, but also, as they can, but also the lap traffic also needs to play ball as well. As we see another battle pack behind Jamie McKnight, they're really starting to four up. Currently four, five cars line astern at the moment. Yeah, count it, David Kirby, Jason Fewens, Mike Talianstich, David Nash almost coming into the picture here as they work their way down the hangar straight and work up in towards Stowe. Tally though, not going to be able to get by this time, at least on the 067, but he's certainly close. Look outside here, gamble on being able to hang it here around the outside, the first part here with the Vale Chicane, get the inside back for the second part and club corner. It does park up Fewens and Fewens decides to commit. Around the outside, he'll hang on to the spot and chop off the back of uh, Dave Kirby in the process there. So, you can see this train now start to form up in a different way of sorts. It's, oh, Fuel's loose through turn one there at Abbey. That's going to put Tally on his gearbox even more. He was there you go, at the, here we go, into, into Village, crisscross from the 21. But now on the outside for here, turn, th turn four, Aintree. Can he get something here or is he going to be held, held out to dry? I think he will be. David Nash, though, can't find a way past, which means that 21 is still going to hang on to P24 for now. Absolutely phenomenal race in there. Tally trying everything he can in his bag of tricks, but Fewens holding strong and doing bars. Fewens has, has a slight lock up there. You go look back at the hypersonic car, the 77 hypersonic car, coming under threat by the Angry Birds racing car. John Latham in this battle as well. Dan, no matter where you look tonight, these battle packs are just brewing absolutely everywhere. Phenomenal racing again as we look through the 77 rear wing back towards the Angry Birds car and the 33 Veterans Game in Australia car as well. So, Latham starting to get a bit of a train falling behind him. As we see, is that the 919 hypersonic car starting to tackle to the back of these guys as well? Yeah, I believe that would it is. Will indeed be Michael Stewart starting to make his way to the back of the group and bringing Robbie Griffiths. No, pardon me, Robbie Griffiths unfortunately out of position now. First car a lap down. Uh, yeah, this is sort of roughly the end of the trains as it were in this race. But Darren Goosey there, that incredibly bright green machine uh, for the old mate and sons 186 uh, there in the background. And then for our last battle pack, it seems, on circuit. Chris Blanchard, Brenton O'Brien, and Michael Quain going at it here. Let's see here that uh, Brenton, unfortunately, lacking a bit of a uh, front hood. So he's had a bit of a, a rough time of it uh, so far already, it seems, tonight. Up seven spots, though, uh, despite the damage on the car. Yeah, Brenton's car looking absolutely beat from pillar to post there. Damage on the left-hand side and missing that rear hood as the, the front hood, rather, the bonnet as well. So. Brenton's been in the walls 57. Just has a little st sticky, sticky, peak, sticky beak up the inside. Doesn't try to make a move, but just doing the good old Craig Lowndes technique of showing your nose, trying to push your opponent into a mistake. Couple different lines being taken here. Brenton choosing the more, more standard racing line. Brenton gets a good run out of that corner, out, out, out of, out of, out of turn. There. Yep. Yeah, the loop there, and then into the kink that he turn five entry. Uh, yeah, it was on board with Quain here for a second. He saw he get to go for first gear to try and get a bit of extra rotation or initial drive, perhaps. But then immediately pulled second, and it was kind of odd. The car almost like just completely bogged on him uh, in the process there. And then he's going to struggle through Luffield, trying to get the car stopped, but also grabbing a gear early to help calm the rotation and over rotation from the rear end. As a result, has dropped off the back of O'Brien and uh, Blanchard here in what is our last battle pack on the road at this stage of the race. But uh, go back up towards the front because it's starting to, uh, again, while we were looking elsewhere, Paul Warwick has made it through 
to uh, to P4 on Jeff Thomas and Matt Vandekrein not too far behind as we're getting to the end of the opening half of the race as well. Brandt lap 17 now underway for our leading drivers. Speaking of 17, that's how many positions Rob Bristow has made up tonight. So Rob's been absolutely clawing his way through the field. Key thing to note that Scott is now well clear of Ken Ladder in P1 and P2. Scott's got three point seconds on P2, so absolutely no threat there of any slipstream, of any real attack. So Scott can kind of just cruise home, do what he's doing at the moment, but Ken Ladder will be coming under threat from Michael Whiting. They are only about nine tenths of a second apart for those two. So battle will be forming there for the second position as we look at Chris Dale at the moment. So Travis Hunt is also up 16 positions and Rick Sabira is also up 12. So some big movers and shakers tonight, Dan. Obviously we can't forget the likes of Tally and McKnight as well, who've both made significant gains coming from the rear of the field. Let's bring it up on screen once again. Yeah, drivers who have made the most gains as the you know, tyre smoke in uh, the back round of shot there as it's Jason Fulins trying to hold off uh, a hard charging David Nash. So Daly currently sits the driver who's made his way forward the most. So uh, you see he's, still, he's got some race pace in, just unfortunately so far back that uh, he's 40 seconds off the race lead uh, at this point in time. Van Gogh is said Rob Crisdale there, up 17 uh, spots. Currently still sitting P7. And behind on the, uh, the positions gain tally, it's going to be Jamie McKnight here, up 16 to P21 uh, there. So looking pretty strong. We haven't talked about him yet tonight, but Travis Hunt also making a, a good night of the race. Unfortunately, pretty rough qualifying by his standards, I'm sure, to be back in 27th, but he's up to 13th and uh, isn't that short on fuel compared to everyone else around him. So unlike what we normally see from the JWM Sim Sports cars, hasn't really under fuel to get those spots. That is a clean car, at least as what we can see, it's clean at the moment, uh, as well as good pace uh, out there tonight in the race. Yeah, Travis absolutely mowing his way through the field there. 14 positions, that's a mammoth effort to, um, to, to, to get up into the 13th. Obviously, it's going to become a little bit harder now as we see Tony Stone Street coming down into the pit lane in the 044 entry as well. Is this for a penalty or some description, or is this for a second stop? Looks like that's going to be driving straight through the lane. Penalty. Now I don't. Looks like I'm just going to confirm here real quick by looking at the chat logs. It has not been issued by race control. So unfortunately for Troy Stone Street, uh, that is uh, some kind of issue out on track with the iRacing penalty system. That is unfortunately uh, going to send him all the way back down to 31st place. Uh, and still has one compulsory stop left to give us here tonight. Night goes from bad to worse for Stone Street, unfortunately. As we see the right-hand side of that car, bit, 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 bit crumpled up. We see some two-car battle packs starting to form there. We see Chad Lewis and Chris Miller, six tenths of a second apart at the moment. Still in the top ten, so that's always, always a good night when you're in the top ten. Um, however, Chris will be looking to continue his march and gain that third position off of Chad Lewis from the RT. So, as always, the battle, the, the, the timing's ebbing and flowing, hanging around that six tenths to a seven tenth of a second margin. So, Chris may also potentially, and this would be a prime time for Chris to kind of just sit there lift and coast into these corners. Obviously, if you lift going on the entry, you can break a little bit deeper, get a better run out as well. So, Save a little bit of fuel, extend this second pit stop, take the minimal required amount needed to get home in that second, in that, in that third stint, final stint of the race. Yeah, as we watch here as they come on to the front straight away. Yeah, will still be... Uh, pardon here, Lewis from... Uh, we're seeing also Jason Fewens is dropping down the order. And that's not for a pit stop. The 067 Banter Reliance car facing the wrong way on the entry to the Vale Chicane. We didn't even get a chance to go back to lap one like I was kind of hoping we would, uh, Brant. But I think it's time to head back to the next of our uh, racecraft simulations replays. Damien Cairns also on the radio as well. So 
Yeah, big contact on the front splitter of that 057 car. So what's going on here with Damien Cairns? Blocking call just come in over the radio, that's what that was, but looks to be okay for now at least. So what we'll do is we'll go to the replay with Jason Fewens here. So he's got John Latham to the outside, McKnight and Nash in front, and then, oh Ooh. no, across the nose of John Latham. That's, and there's it, oh, it's going to get Scott McCune in the process. Oh no, and it's going to tag one of the Angry Birds cars there as well, which will be the 014 of Rick Vigor. Man. That was very, that, very messy, absolutely. Yeah, really poor there. Going forward, Rick Vigor for this one, Brandon. Unfortunately, this is not the ride you'd want to have. Just it's a little influence smoke screen. defense. In Fuen's defense, he's just getting ping pong left, right, and centre there. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Chad, very close to taking out the Veterans Gaming Australia car there. There was also a secondary hypersonic car impacted as well, the Mustang that's just up ahead there. As you can see, going down the old star finish straight. So, um, oh, oh. I want to grab Scott McKay's view of it here. He was in. Oh, where's he go? Dodge that, and then. Oh, it would have been in behind. Oh, yep, there. <laughs> oh, oh geez, Scott, absolutely brilliant wreck avoidance there. Always the following, following the throws of the car in front, where they're spinning. That's generally where they'll end up. So, going the opposite way to that car, as we see Rob Bristow coming down to the pit lane for his second stop of the night. So, now we're starting to see these critical stops starting to form. And this is what I was talking about there, Dan. You saw the 014 there start to close up in the pit entry there to the HSR car. So if you can mosey on underneath the rear wing, if someone's a bit more cautious under pit lane, there's the chance to make up a few valuable tents there going into pit lane. Yeah, it certainly is, but uh, it's not going to be easy. That's for sure. And here as we go on board, next driver, we're going to try and get a chance to chat and see on Zoom. I just don't chat to. <laughs> They're clearly a little busy out there tonight. We probably don't want to be getting in people's ears, but it's Damien Cairns, the Accelerate Sim Racing 88. Back at Mike Talliance, just in hot pursuit here as they come into Brooklyn. You can see that through the 88 looks to be a little wide, which then tightens up the entry to Love Field, and then Towie's going to try and take advantage of it. They're both pretty tight through the middle of the corner to open up the exit, so it means it'll be pretty even for now as they then get on the power down the old stuff in a straight and woodcut. And on up towards Cops once more here as they then back it off. It's David Nash on the radio about something. As well, but he's still circulating. Or not. He's had something happen, that's for sure. Lance is still trying to find a way from, uh, from the 88. Both these cars look very, very even, but Tellingham will have the advantage of that draft as we start to see the effects of it as I speak. Tully showing his nose down the inside. Clean move. Done past the 88. Tick another position off game for Tully Ansich. Yeah, he's looking to charge, and Cairns will actually go straight for the pit lane as a result. So uh, he'll leave that one for now. And as we'll uh, be looking at seeing how drivers go in this second half of the racing show. So see Sievers having his coming through his second stop of the race. It's now in the 06. He's in the lane as well. Jason Fewens has been in there for 90 seconds now, so race continues to get worse for Fewens on this second pit stop. On track meanwhile, Dan Hall, Travis Hunt, I was to stop at some point later on, but they're both kicking on nicely here at this stage in what is currently 11th and 12th place. So Travis Hunt looking to also be a contender for most spots gained in this race tonight. Uh, currently up 15, although he will owe us back a couple in the second stop, I think. Uh, as the leader of those who have pitted twice, Rob Prisdale, currently back in 21st and only about 30 seconds back from those two here. So they'll fall right back into the clutches of Scott as we see the 462 having to defend from Travis. Still wider stern. So they've got no, it's got Peaky Car just in front of them there. About a second and a half up the road currently. Three baggots and Beckett's. 
32. Absolutely stuck straight in behind that 462 car. Trying to maximise that straight, the straight line of the Mustang. Coming down into the back chicane. And then down into Cobbs. 32. Both of them into pit lane. Straight ahead. So, get the 32. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly the pit entry that you want. Close. You nearly made contact with the rear of the 462 there, Dan. Yeah, but they... ne nearly isn't going to uh, do it, so that's all good. There, in the case of uh, Travis Hunt, pick up a couple of extra tents. Let's look out on track to Chad Lewis and Chris Miller still going at it here. He's in for eighth place, and it's here for Chad. He's been holding down a spot here in the back half of the top ten without being in too much drama tonight, it seems. Miller up a couple of spots to get into the ten so far in this one. Dad's had a pretty stable night, no, no positions gained, no positions lost, so Dad started in P8, stayed in P8 currently, but he's got his hands full here with Chris Miller in the 666 Fishy car. Past few laps have been pretty even, Stevens. Uh, lap, nine, lap, lap, lap 20 and 21, fairly even, you know, 0 .8, 0 0.08 of a tenth in it, so not a whole lot between these two, so they're pretty even as they come across the old star finish straight down into what would be turn one heading down towards maggots and beckets at the moment i do apologize for my lack of names around silverstone this is the one part of the track i do know dan well, as you post up here at Ch on the exit of chapel as they come through the end of the sequence and then get ready to power out to the hangar although that camera there and take a while for them to go and get to it so we'll, uh, we'll leave that one behind as chase and fumes in the pits for four minutes and change I don't think we'll be seeing him back out and racing uh, here tonight. Jeff Thomas, though, will come into the pit lane from what was P4, P5. Now, any kind of Miller in the background there is going to dive to the pit lane. 727 car trying to stretch the second stint as long as they possibly can. Uh, you know, minimize that third and final stint, minimize that second pit stop, which is a smart play. You see Scott Gamble still out as well with Kent Ladder. And Scott's just stretched his legs. Five and a half seconds, 5.6 seconds. He is well clear of anyone behind him. Yeah, continuing to charge ahead. Kent Ladder is uh, reasonably comfortable in second, but hasn't completely dropped Michael Winding since these two drivers exchanged positions in the opening stint of the race. Winding with his best qualifying of the season to be on the front row alongside Gamble. Kent back in P4 to start this one. Up a couple of spots and then Paul Warwick now looking well now comfortable in fourth place at the moment though he owes the pit stop relative to Jeff Thomas who's actually just come out. Crucially this is an exchange in effective position here. Matt Vandekran with a spinning on the same lap was able to actually take on substantially less fuel here Brant and jump the 43 in this second and what should be final stop for them both. Yeah, Matt running potentially long in that first in that first first pit stop, and you know potentially even fuel saving. So to jump Jeff is a fantastic result um, for Matt. Jeff probably not going to be too pleased about that. So we can watch this battle pack start to form, start to show up a little bit closer towards the end of the race. Here we know that Jeff Thomas is very good in this 43 car. Week in week out, it's been a top four, top ten, top five contender. Um, and, and, and Jeff has looked very strong no matter where we've gone. So as we see Scott Gamble come down into the pits as well, along with Kent Ladder and Michael Whiting. Top three in the pit lane. Yeah, it looks like it is again. Everyone going pretty even on the tank. Yep, here they all come. So first car to have done two stops is Matt Vandekron. You will see here, he should come out. Question is, where's he coming in relation to Paul Warwick? That's the driver I'd be looking for at this stage. Uh, when you're Vanderkron, let's put it up here on screen and watch that gap come down. Hopefully it'll stay happy with us because uh, we are currently talking a car in the pits versus a car on track as it's watching here as well with Jeff Thomas in behind. Waiting to see where is Warwick there. 12, 13, 14, 15 seconds as he goes up. 
This is going to be close on the exit here, Brant, as Warwick's not gone yet. No, the undercut is going to work for Vandekron. And those tyres are not going to be that much older either, so it's not like it's a significant difference coming into the final stint of this race. Two or three lap older tyres, not too much of a concern. Anything above five, which is where you'll probably start to see that that difference really start to kick in. But damn, Vandekran absolutely killing it with the undercut there. That is really, really critical to note. Um, as we still see Taliansic, Whiting, Ladder and Gamble. Well, Gamble's pit recently, sorry. Um, so Whiting and Taliansic still owe us a pit stop at the Actually, just He's just Tally, actually. He's the odd one out amongst the uh, the leading drivers. So whilst he's up a monumental 37 spots, that will correct here in due course. The only other driver that owes us a pit stop, no, pardon me, there is another one further down the order. So Brendan O'Brien is the second car yet to stop twice. Scotty Van Loon, unfortunately, yet to stop twice as well here in this one. As Bruce Tannock, no pardon me, that's three who yet to pit. Scott McHugh knows this one will stop according to uh, what I'm seeing here. And then it'll be Bruce Tannock coming in now for his second and final stop of the race. As John Latham having some yeah, big connection issues as potentially you're going to see the 24 Shadow Racing entry disappear off our charts here in a little bit. Back out apparently there he is now. Hopefully that's not going to be a terminal as Tally comes in from the front of the field. Let's see where the 21 old Australia car can come out. The field now cleansed for the majority of the drivers. So as you said, it'd be critical to see where Tally and Sitch can come out. Still in the pit box at the moment, tumbling down outside the top 10 now. Currently in P11, now P12. Rob Christdale has come out in P11. Um, four seconds away from Dean Favella. Oh, as we see the 180 and the 43 really getting into it there. Um, the 43 has also jumped Paul Warwick as well. Uh, we saw those positions reversed prior to the pit stops. They've now reversed back again. So this will be a three car battle pack very, very quickly here, Dan. 43 coming very close to getting the move done on the 180, but just unable to get his inside, his, the car up the inside there sufficiently earlier on in this lap. Yeah, it was close, but yeah, not quite for uh, Jeff Thomas. So loses a bit of a run here on uh, Matt van der Kron as they come through Woodkin on this occasion. Paul Warwick, thankfully, is far enough back, and probably is far enough back that I guess I could see Jeff here is willing to have a crack at van der Kron for a couple of laps and then maybe look to settle in here for the rest of this race. They're both on the same tyre strategy. They've both got one extra lap on their tyres rolled with Warwick behind as into maggots and Beckett's they'll come. Really having to lean on these cars. They can't hot hang a lot of speed and then they have to fight the car on exit if they put the power down too aggressively as well. It's certainly a handful here at Silverstone and then they get a chance to take a breather. Head for top speed as we pass 265 for Jeff Thomas in the slipstream, and then back it on down once again for start. Jeff having an almighty wiggle just before the entry to hang a straight there. So we see closing right up to the 180 car. Come down the main start finish line now. Start main main start finish straight. I apologise. No, that's the old. I don't like this new reconfiguration of Silverstone. It makes it very confusing. Coming down into Maggots and Beggots now as we speak. Yes, in fact, actually, they're coming in there, the village, the loop and Aintree there. They're, they're on the other side of the circuit. So, yeah, Maggots and Beggots just off to our right of screen here. And uh, then they'll power out. Here we go. To Aintree and the Wellington straight away. And head back for the old section, old course uh, at Brooklyn. So. That's where they're at at this stage. This is a battle pack now. Chris Miller also, watch out for him. He's coming to join the party uh, in P7 here at the moment. So this could easily become uh, a multi-way fight for uh, that position in fourth. Pardon me. 
put that around there to show that one and see where the moving and shaking is happening in this race now. Quiet until you get back to about P14, I can tell you, is where things definitely starting to get interesting. Michael Kirby under assault from the 32 car here. So we see Chris Smart in there as well, along with Craig Friend. So a four car train yet again. 307 God, he has his hands full for sure as we see the 32 close right up. Running a little bit wide there actually. That allows Hunt through. So that's a big error there from the 32 car, unfortunately, as we're looking back the rear, through the rear wing. Oh, that honking great rear wing of the Mustang back to the 696 car of Craig Friend. So, Smart, oh, sorry, Hunt losing that position to Smart. Smart will go, thank you very much, and through he goes. Hunting down his teammate, Dave Kirby, for that P14. Yeah, we'll see if this battle pack persists later on in the race. Now it's in here, we're not getting we're not too far away from the end of this one as it begins to creep up on us here. Brand already on lap 27 for at least the drivers out front in this race. These guys here coming to the end of their lap 26. So we've only got another eight laps to go here tonight. And uh, that means we should be done in just about 15 and 20 minutes if it stays green like it is. As in the front of that pack, Dave Kirby's going to peel into the pit lane for his... Second or third pit stop. This here is interesting. I don't, he was all sorted on his pit, so he had to come again. Something. He, looks like he may have underfueled potentially, just because that was a very short pit stop. Only 11.2 seconds. Interesting there. Well, let's see if I can quickly look at the race laps and see. Pitted on lap two. Ah. Kirby off sequence with the field, although yes, he did come in again, he did come in back on lap lap 18, lap, yeah, end of lap 18, he came to the pits a second time well, he should have been able to make it home from there, 100% yeah, so interesting decision there, yeah, confirmed three stops now on the name for uh, David Kirby, so unfortunately that's one that's a bit of a mystery there as uh, come back to the fight for second for a second because Michael Whiting is still not letting go of uh, this spot here. Ken Ladder is going to have to watch out. In fact, look at that there on lap 26. A rough old lap there for Ken, at least relative to his own teammate. Four tenths of a second gain and only 0 0.06 lost the previous lap. So Michael Whiting having a really good lap on lap 26. Ladder kind of starting to struggle. Well, he no, ladder starts to pull that gap back just a little bit. So these guys, pretty even Stevens again, as you would expect. They are team cars, so they're going to have to play careful to avoid any contact. But um, as we swap back down to the Angry Birds car, the 43, and Paul Warwick here, the 180, most sponsored car of Chad. Matt Vandercran, I apologize. Very different line there for Jeff Thomas compared to Paul Warwick. Jeff really trying to get up the inside of the 180, but really cutting, cutting those corners very tight, which allows that 050, obviously, to have that better run on the on the hangar straight, which is really, really critical. Short blast here down the oh. Wellington, but he looks... Oh. He looks for it, Brant. Can't quite get there, though, through Brooklands. Although it doesn't upset... Thomas here through Luffield, this run to Woodcut and the old start from his straight. So far, no, but it's going to give Vandekron a bit of a breather there up ahead, so allow the 180 to uh, relax this time through Maggots, Beckett's, and Chapel. Check back in with them later on in the race. And as uh, we do have ourselves, is a, a solid two way stoush brewing uh, at this time. Rob Crystal would like to stay up in P11, but so Dan Hall is going to make that a run for his money to try and hang on. Try and contest the spot inside of uh, four tenths, nearly under three, as they work through cops. Yeah, Dan Hall having a pretty good night as well. Up five spots currently. It'll be six spots if he can get this move on Chris Dale. But Chris Dale up 13 spots tonight so far. So solid drive by there. So we can have another three-car battle pack. 
this one down all the way down in 30th. 014 Rick, Rick Vigor in the Angry Birds racing car. The 919 as well is involved in here. So rough old night for the 919. Yeah, there's just been a race control call. I'm just going to see if I can pick up where that would have been. There's, a, there's been a couple of... There's no major... Oh, hang on. It's a driving slow wheel. But that's probably it. Let's see if we can pick it up here. So he's got Chris Blanchard in behind, heading into the village turn. And, oh, little bump. And, unfortunately, that's going to put Vigor in the... Oh, the runoff, actually. Be precise and uh, gather it back up. Although instant redress there from Blanchard, it seems. Yeah, smart play by Blanchard. Knew he was in the wrong. Just means that. Well, I mean, unfortunate for these two, but um, the that lovely neon green car absolutely was just. It's like, cool. I'll take two positions. Easy game. So not a bad night when that happens. But we see this three-car battle pack really invigorated now. With Michael Stewart tagging on the back of them as well. He's used that fast repair we saw early in the race, that car having some significant front end damage um, from the from the innocent being the innocent bystander in the shenanigans that unfolded early on. So rough old night for Stewart down in 32nd position. Um, only three tenths off the car two places ahead of him in P30 at the moment. As we see Michael on the zoom link in the bottom right hand corner of your pictures currently. These three absolutely line of stern. Stewart's car looking quite good. Un just a little bit hesitant on the throttle there. Coming down what is a hanger straight, if I dare try and say another straight name here and potentially get it wrong. Unfortunately, you have. That's the Wellington. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Wellington into Brooklyn's, into, uh, into Luffield. As long, Come as, back no to one's, as long as no one's keeping track of this, so the chat will be all good. Uh, now you've said it, as there's a bit of chatter on the race control channels, that... Steve Varga, something up there. Right, we've got some stuff to look at, it seems, apparently, as Tina right on board with uh, Michael for the time being. Very nice run through Maggots in towards Beckett's. Can he get it pulled up here and then really set Chapel up for a good run? He's trying, that's for sure here. Is in front of him, you've got Chris Blanchard working over the back of Rick Vigor. And unfortunately, it looks like maybe it's a little too checked up was Michael. And uh, come up to Stowe here on the liminal, almost in the draft at the end of the hangar straight there, uh, Ramp. As so we come into five laps to go for these drivers, and they start lap 30 here in a couple of turns time. Michael's 919 Mustang is so strong under brakes. You see him close right up to the car in front there. Absolutely phenomenal braking performance of this 919 Mustang, but he just, it's those exits where he's struggling there, and he just can't get that power down quick enough to be able to get close enough to make a move. So he closes right up under the braking here, as we'll see yet again, as we now down, head, head down into Maggots and Beggars. I know I got that one correct. No, I didn't, never mind. That's the other side of the circuit again, just oh. to give you a, a heart attack. Slight you know. brake lock up there as I try to change the subject fairly quickly. <laughs> yeah, the Village, Loop and Aintree. No, Village, the Loop and Aintree. There's your three turns to come back onto the Wellington Straight. You get the opening half of the lap and then go back to the old part of the Silverson Grand Prix. All this fighting here between these three, it looks like Rick Vigor will live to see P30 another day. We might try and grab a quick replay of dramas for Stephen Varga on that last lap and see if we pick up what that might have been. There's something happening apparently. Riding on board here with the 919, still stuck under the rear wing of that triple six. Triple six car? Yes. Actually, not quite 669 of 669. Chris Blanchard there. Second looking to see what can find happen to Stephen Varga. Although, 
can't actually see anything that's um, going to come up, so I have to leave that for now. However, Dan, it looks like we've got a really good three-car battle pack here for P4, 5, and 6, and also for P2 as well. So P2 and P3 separated by four-tenths of a second, the 269 to 520. They've been inseparable all night, and that continues to remain the same with three laps to go. And then P4, 5, and 6 all line astern. As we see, Jeff Thomas actually starting to just drop off ever so slightly on the timing monitor there. Just a little bit. Not far enough to be of a concern, though. But that 180 is still holding strong from the 050 and 43. It's, it's been relentless in its attack throughout the, this this race to try and jag that P4 position. But Vandercran doing very well here. Holding off some of the bigger teams like Fishy Motorsports. Holding that driver, Paul Warwick, at bay. Who we know is no slouch for sure. And then we look back down to Dan Hall and Rob Chris Dale in another two-car battle. Dan Hall making his way past Chris Dale for that sixth position gain. Damien Cairns, Chris Smart, P13 and P14 separated by, well, no, absolutely nothing. Um, as we see Smart showing the nose, will he get the move done down the inside? Yes, he will. Very clean move. Smart move there by Chris Smart. Damien didn't fight it. Only three, only three laps to go. No point trying to write your car off here. Everyone started to come back to each other now. We've got the 911 and Nash and Ricky Hyde in the 802. And another battle. Gee whiz, Dan. All of a sudden, we've gone from having nothing to well having, you know, everything. Yeah, just picking them up here towards the end of the race. There's great friends in the lane. So, trouble there for... Uh, in fact, they got another car at the back of the pack. That'd be Chad Vigor here in the 016 diving to the pit. So... That's, a, that's two cars here right at the end of the race. So they underfueled themselves here, it seems, and uh, just got the fuel calculations slightly off. Just, just there you go. Fuel burn indeed being a bit of a wild variable here tonight as drivers ebbing and flowing with their with their burn rates. Fortunately, catching a few drivers out. So then there's that there. Yeah, that, that battle for 30th. Chris Blanchard back ahead of Rick Vickers. Oh, Warwick just called in. And Paul Warwick is now back in P5. What? But he's... Uh, that's where he... Nothing recorded, so we're going to jump back he, manually on the replay. Who is in front of... Matt yeah, where, where's checked Matt out. Vandercrantz gone? Yeah. He, he, he's checked out. He's still there, but he's now up here. Oh. So, all right. So go back manually to find this if we can. No, it yeah. already happened by then, so we've got to keep going back. Still already happened. Still already happened by then. So here we are. It's happened. Right. So a lap ago, we checked in with them here as they came out of chapels. Is it going to come from Jeff Thomas behind, perhaps? I suspect it might. Let's go on board with Jeff Thomas here. And oh, bump once. Coming into Stowe Corner. And a second attack. Oh. And then, oh, the cars get continue, together. He's on. Right, so no positions exchanged, but that explains why Matt Vandercron has been able to get away with away from them all of a sudden. As we're on the penultimate lap of the race, go back live here, and it is now very much a battle for positions here. How's this? In the uh, P5 on back, you've got Tim Nickel now threatening, Chris Miller threatening, Chad Lewis, he's a little further back, but maybe he can get into this one as well here. Jeff Thomas absolutely not giving up on Paul Warwick. He's been relentless in the in the in the chase of that 050 car. Matt Vandercran, on the other hand, quite happy that this has occurred. He's safely now in P4. So Vandercran rubbing his hands together. Oh no. We, oh, Michael Stewart gone off yet again. This horrendous night continues, unfortunately, for the 919 car. Down 15 positions. One to forget for Stuart. One to forget for a number of cars tonight, uh, unfortunately, here, Dan. I'm going to try and pick up how this has happened. So up the back of Rick Vigor. Oh, that's going to go all by its lonesome as well over the bumps through Chapel. Oh, very lucky to pull it up just before making contact with the tyre barrier. However, the battle for P2 is closed right up. Only three and a half tenths of a second between it with two laps to go. A lap and a half to go. Not even lapping a couple of turns here as they come off the end of the hangar into Stowe. 
Scott Gamble will take the white flag shortly as he's already through the Vale of Chicane there and coming around club, I'm certain. But this is going to be where we want to keep our eyes on for the moment here as white flag will fly across the line there as our race leader gets the final lap here from Silverson underway for this fifth round of the season. And it's spicy again as they now start stacking up behind uh, Paul Warwick. Indeed, four-car fight there to watch out for as well. I've just been told that uh, Troy Stone Street's had a bit of a rough night. He's on his way towards potentially a second drive-through on iRacing incident points as these drivers here battling for P5 come round to start the final lap. They'll be ones to watch as well here. You've got Rob Christel just there at the back of the short trying to challenge Dan Hall uh, as well. And then you've got the big pack from 21st through 27th. They're coming up to Storrow. They'll get the final lap underway shortly and there might be some fighting there too. But we'll go back to the front here, Bramp, as they're coming off of the Wellington Strait into uh, Brooklyn's and Luffield here. One third of a lap down, two thirds to go. Yeah, the, the fishy car still, well, I would say, the, the fishy Mustang still holding very strong here, the 269 of Ken Ladder. Holding strong as we go down the old star finish straight. And so we check back into this four car battle for P5. Paul Warwick, Jeff Thomas coming under. Significant pressure from the 666 here of Chris Miller. Chris getting a much better egg, much better mid corner egg. Off of from that triple six car compared to the 43. We saw the 43 off wide by about half a car width. Looking back through the rear wing, Chris has to manage the front and the attack on in, on in front and the defense behind as well. There's still absolutely nothing in this battle for P5 as we ride on board here with Chris Miller currently. They're going through Maggots and Beckett's. All right. Check on board with the 520. Still stuck behind his teammate of Ken Ladder. But Scott Gamble led from the start, started with pole, led from start to finish, absolutely unchallenged. Scott Gamble will be your race winner again this season, taking his total to three, four rounds now. That's so four. absolutely, four rounds, absolute domination here by Scott Gamble. Matt Vandercron will bring it home in fourth for the time being, and it looks like for now, Paul Warwick will fend off the fight from behind as they bring it around the final turn. He will take a top five uh, result here tonight. Just looking for our final couple of battles. Dan Hall will hang on to P12 ahead of Rob Crisdale. And it will mean that Mike Taliancic our biggest mover of the race up 25 spots to bring it home p16 i think that might well we'll have to confer as to whether that counts for chubby buns burgers driver of the day here in split one We've got this one here between david nash and ricky high but that's going to end up like that this is a little more exciting here as they come across the line stephen bugger will hang on against the head of stone street point and then you've got mcknight and kirby in the background of shop and that is just about it for here. No, Rick Vigor, Damon Fisher. They're going at it all the way back here. There's, oh, is Rick Vigor out of fuel? He might be coughing at home, it seems. Did Rick Vigor not also pit previously as... He's out. Well? Last stop 14 laps ago, and he's going to limp home, unfortunately, for Rick. Oh, Scotty Van Loon will get a spot back. Scott McCune and Michael Quayne going to get them both! Oh. Quayne! Engine will go kaboom. <laughs> that's not what we expected to, uh, to, to finish off the race, that's for sure. Oh boy. Well, some spicy battling up front, that's for certain, but that's the kind of stuff we look forward to seeing. And we'll have to confer shortly as to uh, who we think deserves the uh, the driver of the day award. But I believe our results are official. Yep, everyone who was out there has indeed come across the line. So we will now bring up the, uh, the race results here for us now, Brant, and start looking at how they finished at the line, at least, for this fifth round at the Racecraft Simulations Vet Veterans 
championship here in top split. And how's that? Comfortable win, 8.2 seconds. The number for Scott Gamble ahead of Ken Ladder there tonight. Solid job from Michael Whiting, able to start strong and stay close for that podium battle. Uh, Matt Vanderkrein able to get ahead of that battle pack there, but possibly controversial there between Paul Warwick and Jeff Thomas. They finish as they were in that battle with Chris Miller, Tim Nickel just in behind there. In the four guys back for the fifth through eighth. Chad Lewis bringing it home in ninth place there tonight for the 727 ER team machine. And Dean Favell, our last car in the top 10 there. Up three spots uh, for his efforts there tonight, Brad. As we move on to the top 20, Dan Hall coming home narrowly ahead of Rob Crisdale, who drove absolutely phenomenally to make up, you know, those 12 or 13 positions. Chris Smart for Fishing Motorsports coming home in P13, followed by Damien Cairns, Travis Hunt, and Mike Taliancic from the rear of the field up to P16. Phenomenal job there by Tally. Rick Sibra, Sibira in P17 for Frog Leap Juice Racing, followed by Craig Friend and Old Mate and Sons in the 696. David Nash in the 911, and then Ricky Hyde in the Partner 801 Sim Racing, coming home in P19 and P20, respectively. Stephen Varga and Tony Stone Street in P21 and P22. Mark Poynton and Jamie McKnight in P23 and P24. McKnight making up another 18 positions. Dave Kirby and Scott McKay in P25 and 26. Latham, whose night was filled with drama in P27. Chad Vigor in P28, Darren Goosey in P29, and Christopher Blanchard rounds out our 30 cars in the 669 in P30 there, Dan. Does indeed, with our final drivers finishing the race tonight, going to be Damon Fisher back there in 31st. The Quantum Peggy's racing 505, unfortunately for, uh, for Damon. Actually, he does make up spot, I should say, but yeah, I think he went off strategy tonight and it didn't quite work out. As he'd hope, Brenton O'Brien does make up 10 spots. The other driver not to qualify in terms of time-wise tonight to get to 32nd. There's Scotty Van Loon, unfortunately, early damage there, unable to recover much, but will still be home 33rd. Scott McCune, uh, unfortunately, entangled in some stuff there as well, ends up back in 34th. Michael Quayne gets a couple of spots up to P35 there tonight, along with Rick Vigger up two spots to P36. Here to see Michael Stewart, uh, unfortunately, one of the uh, hardest hit tonight. Uh, through various incidents not of his own making and unfortunately a little bit of his own will be the last car on the lead lap there in 37th uh, with Robbie Griffiths and Paul Burns a lap down there each for 38th and 39th Jason Fewens our last car finishing and three laps down in P40 our retirements for tonight we're going to be Bruce Tannock and Stewie Hall to make our 42 starters and the 42 finishes there as a result mick rudd not in split one so we can pass him by but that's going to do it for tonight and uh i think we are going to confirm here between the two of us that we will uh give it to uh mike teleantic for the chubby buns burgers driver of the day we'll see if we can get him in for a chat here real quick uh in a couple of minutes but of course head to our podium interviews and who else but we'll grab, I think, Scott Gamble as our race winner here to start off once again as we'll bring him into the box and congratulate Scott once again. Another dominant, successful, powerful race. Um, what do these guys need to do to try and hunt you down, it seems? How you going, Dan? Yeah, I was a little surprised there because um, the draft is pretty big here. So I thought... If they stayed in mid-draft, you know, like anything could happen, but um, we managed to break it in the first in, which was good. And yeah, it just played out from there. And it's it's one of those track stand that like, as soon as you lock up your tires, it's they're gone, they're cooked. And it's really hard to, to gather them back under you. So you start dropping times hand over fist. So the whole goal is don't lock tires, just keep it smooth, you know, and, and the tires will stay with you. Oh, I definitely got a feeling of that with the drivers who shared us their Zoom feed tonight. Yeah, just exactly like on the replay here, turns one and two. Like, how much are you having to balance this? Because we heard it was, say, Jeff Thomas was going to be so delicate through corners like that. But also things at the end of the, the Wellington straight into Brooklyn's and the old start finish complex. Cops corner, they're off the old start finish straight. End of the hangar straight into Stowe, um, let alone Maggots, Beckett's, and Chapel, where you're having to really dance the car, as you said there, and, and, and look after the front tyres. 
Yeah, absolutely. Because you're turning and braking so often, and these cars don't like to do that. <laughs> they like to brake nice and uh, in a straight line. And so, yeah, turning and braking, like you say. And it's good you had the zoom feeds. I look forward to watching that to see how those guys uh, tackled it because it is it's it is difficult. Yeah, unfortunately, a bit of chaos further on back. But for you, I mean, yeah, apart from drivers going a little longer in the opening stints, um, you didn't end up uh, dropping, uh, apart from that, didn't drop a lap from the lead of the race. So uh, certainly going to get yourself most of the bonus points that were on grabs here tonight and just keep on charging forward, it seems, uh, when it comes to uh, yeah the championship as it so happens. And, uh, well, halfway down, halfway to go. And uh, go to the Red Bull ring up next week. How's that possibly going to be uh, from experience or other thoughts otherwise? Yeah, I don't mind Red Bull Ring in the F1 car. Um, not so much in the V8. It's a, a track I, I struggle a little with. But um, yeah, it's a good opportunity to work at it. We've got um, we've got vets there and, and a couple other races coming up there. So yeah, I'm going to have to work really hard at Red Bull. Um, but it is a really good track and it's a really good track for the V8. So yeah, looking forward to it. Well, indeed. Hopefully, yeah, as I said, interesting track here tonight with Silverstone and the Grand Prix configuration. As you said, hopefully, therefore, look to see what Red Bull Ring can bring us next week. But until then, Scott, who do you want to thank for helping you get it done in the 5.43 tonight? Yeah, good. Shout out to the 9.5 Sim Sports team. Um, great bunch of lads over there. And yeah, you know, they're always having a bit of a chat, so it's good. Um, to the sponsors there, Racecraft, uh, Turn In Apparel, RSW Graphics, Racing Ease, and prestige cinematography. Thank you very much, guys. Um, to yourselves over at SimSpeed, thank you. Always uh, look forward to watching the broadcast back and your other broadcasts that you have going. And the two, Ken and Michael, congratulations, well done on the, the podium. And also, yeah, to the drivers and uh, the crew over at uh, Race Control, um, led by one of your guys over there in um, Scott Rankin, so yep, thanks for them for turning up every each week and, and doing a great job. So yeah, thank you very much, guys. Well, glad to have you as always and a pleasure to be able to bring it for you, Scott. You're our race winner here at Silverstone for round five in split one. Well, Brent, we'll uh, hand to you here in a second and grab the next of our drivers uh, on the podium. It'll be Ken Ladder uh, from Fishy Motorsports in the 269. Grab him in here to speak with you now. And well done on the P2 on the second position tonight. How did you find that race this evening and what do you have to do to hunt down that race car, racecraft car? Because he just seems untouchable at the moment. Yeah, I think what's happening is, particularly in that, that first stint or two, um, getting little micro lockups. And it, like, once you sort of start locking up into the corner, it hurts the tyres a little bit and then straight away it hurts your pace. And then it seems to be that culminating sort of thing. And you probably would have noticed in the last stint that we were actually, um, well, the, 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 we, I think only gained a couple, of, a couple of seconds, two or three seconds in that last stint. But for the most part, when we we're nailing the laps, we we're pretty much on par with them. And I think we we're starting to be a bit nice on the brakes. We weren't locking up the brakes as much. And I think that's what's hurting us at the moment. I was just talking about it with Gamble before. Yeah, and, and Scotty echoed those remarks as well. Um, he said the exact same thing about lockups and, and the tires being gone. So, um, but. Disregarding that, how was your race? You seem to be locked in an endless battle with your teammate behind you there for, for pretty much the entire entire race there. Yeah, it was just, um, quality didn't go so well. I kind of made, made a bit of a mess of that. So I was back a little bit further than I probably should have been. And um, it, once I got past Fannycran, um, we just sort of leapt away after that and slowly sort of crept up on, on Whiting. Um, he was struggling a bit in the first stint and he's, he was just like, I can just take it. So um, well, once I got close enough, obviously. And um, and then he came good really in that, in that last, probably probably the last stint, he came really good, came back really good and I couldn't shake him. He, he, he drove a really good race at the end there. Was it just, just, just teammates just keeping each other behind or was Whiting actually real? Was he actually trying to, to press you into a mistake there and actually try to get that jag, that second position off you? Oh, well, it's all possible, isn't it? You know, but, you know, I was, that, that, particularly that last stint, I was giving it everything I had. I was wringing the neck out of this damn thing. And it, I mean, obviously, if I made a mistake, it would have been easy enough for him to pass, but he, he only got close there just a couple of times where maybe he could have had a bit of, you know, shown a nose or something like that. But 
I mean, obviously, you know, he's a good driver as well. He's not going to make a move unless he knows it can stick, you know. Overall, heading to Red Bull Ring next week. Thoughts on that? Have you done much testing already? Have you driven the supercar around there? You need anything other than a high, a high downforce car? Um, I've had some. I've rarely, mainly done all my races in um, in the V8 around the Red Bull Ring, and I'm normally very quick there. So hopefully, I can find something for next week and um, bridge that gap um, between myself and Gamble. And, you know, only time will tell, but I do like that track and, you know, hopefully we can maybe get that one more step because that first place is definitely leading us so far um, this season. Yeah, you've been, been mighty consistent. On that note, anyone you'd like to thank? Teammates, drivers, sponsors, friends, families? Um, well, well, on Scotty. He, once again, just drove a fantastic race. Um, and uh, and Whiting as well, you guys, uh, Race Control, um, all the guys at Fishy, and um, of course our, spot, our sponsors, West End Motor Group, Infinity Design, DC Shades, Battery Warehouse, Early Beach, Precision Sim Training, thank you. Cheers, thank you much Lee, for that Ken, and good luck for next week. Okay, cheers. That was your P two in second position in the race overall. Dan, I think it's time we bring in the final podium position, Michael Whiting. And it will indeed. We'll bring in the man behind the wheel of the 520. And uh, also welcome him for the first time to the, uh, the comms box post race uh, here, Michael. So uh, good to hear from you for the first time this season. How's it feeling being on the podium here uh, at Silverson tonight? Uh, yeah, it's good. Um, had a uh, really good run tonight, so plenty of practice. Felt really comfortable in the setup. Um, need to help from the, the boys, obviously, doing race runs and quality runs throughout the week. So um, that certainly helps things when it comes to race night. Yeah, sort of. Actually, a good curious to hear sort of yeah, what sort of preparation into that sort of felt like or into the bank because yeah, when we sort of heard about how just feeling the car out and getting being comfortable with the car in the opening stint and not uh, struggling with the tyres too much tonight being one of the big ones uh, to sort of be mindful of uh, so far. And how, how is it like for you Because um, in terms of managing the car and uh, making sure to keep it uh, pointed where you wanted it to go? Um, look, it is you know, it is one of those tracks where you've got to be very gentle on the tyres. Um, otherwise, they fall off really, really quickly. Um, I didn't have the pace for Scotty tonight, um, and Kenny was right there, and Kenny's third up championships uh, as well. So um, to stay with those boys, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. It's a pretty good result for myself, so... Um, looking forward to next week at Red Bull, um, another favourite, so should be good. Yeah, I mean, speaking of Red Bull and next week, um, as you said, yeah, well, it's a completely different animal of a track, a lot of more draft reliant and, uh, well, influence, I guess we could say as well. Um, what are we expecting uh, there when it comes to the, the V8 and Red Bull combination? Um, I mean, it is a very, uh, it's quite a short track as well, so lap traffic could become a problem. Um, so you're going to have to manage pit stops and tyres and um, hopefully work together with the draft as well to try and get up the front or stay up the front if you're up that far to begin with. So um, it, it is a favourite. Um, it, it can create a bit of drama too with pit entry and things like that. So be interested to see how the race folds out. Indeed, there'll be plenty for us here to worry about. And well, yeah, I definitely say that plenty for you to be worried about out there on the circuit. But before we let you go, Michael, who do you want to thank for helping you get it done tonight in the 520? Mate, obviously all the guys at Fishy Motorsports, um, West End Motor Group, DC Shades, um, Infinity Designs, um, who else have I missed? Um, Battery Warehouse, Illy Beach, um, and obviously all, all the guys that help us during the week and little bits of pieces, you know, um, as we're doing practice during the week, you know, you can take this corner differently and all those type of things, it all, all adds up, so. Well, there we are. Glad to hear from you, Michael. Hopefully hear from you again later on the season. All the best uh, next weekend for the upcoming rounds. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. And, uh, Brant, that unfortunately is going to do it for our interviews here tonight as uh, uh, unable to be you know, catch up with Mike Taliancic, but we'll confirm, yeah, with that 25 positions gained uh, here tonight, we are definitely in agreement that that is worthy of the Chubby Buns Burgers Driver of the Day award here. Unfortunate to be, uh, yeah, not be able to hear from him uh, on this one because uh, yeah, he had to make his way through from uh, the at very last low, very last row on the grid. 
Yeah, absolutely stealth of drive by Tony Ansich tonight. I don't think anyone can take that away from him. Up 25 positions from P41 up to P16. So close to being in that top 15 overall. So, um, yeah, Chubby Barnes Burgers, driver of the day. Yeah, definitely, hands down, has to be Tully Ansich. Rob Crisdale also drove an almighty race as well to be up those 12 or 13 positions as well from the pointy end of the grid. So, hats off to Rob, but yeah. Mike was just in a really in a, in, a, in a league of his own, making up those positions um, through through the through the field there, Dan. Yeah, he certainly was. So, congrats to Mike. Hopefully, we'll see him back out on track in a couple of rounds. It's the first time out since uh, the big news affecting the old Australia team, uh, with well, a lot of the drivers uh, departing the team. So, it's going to be a bit of a time of rebuilding for for Mike here yeah, to keep that project going, but. We'll wait and see how that plays out in the coming days and weeks or months, depending on how long it takes. But that'll basically do us for us here tonight. We're back racing again next Thursday night. It will be the end e evening of Anzac Day, yes, but we are certainly going to be busy out there as we head to the Red Bull Ring, as we've said to the drivers already and heard from them so far, Brandon, what they're expecting uh, around the Styrian Hills at that 4.3 kilometre F1 circuit. Yeah, Red Bull Ring, very, it's a relatively short circuit. Um, you know, it'll be about a minute and a half-ish, minute 45 laps for these supercars, a lot of cars as well. Uh, so as, as, as Michael Whiting said, you know, traffic could potentially play a part with these larger grids as well. So. Very much looking forward to seeing what unfolds next week. Uh, plenty of overtaking positions as spots as well at the Red Bull Ring, so should be a cracker of a race, Dan. Yeah, it certainly will. One final uh, shout out as well, of course, uh, to uh, Mike Stewart, uh, the Balin Stewart Foundation, uh, and to those who have been affected by knife attacks, both uh, at the Westfield Bondi Junction, elsewhere as well in uh, the country, such as up in Queensland. Make sure, if you haven't, to check out the balenstewartfoundation.org.au website. It's linked in our YouTube and Facebook uh, live chats from tonight. And uh, to see what you can to support the Balen Stewart Foundation's mission and uh, message of helping to try and prevent uh, knife crime, particularly among youth and young adults in the community. But on behalf of uh, yourself, Brant, and the SimSpeed broadcasting team on the whole, Big thanks, of course, the Vet Veterans team for putting on this racing series and to Racecraft Simulations, our title sponsor for 2024, along with the supporting partners of Player One Sim Gear, Nova Sim Sports, Logitech G, Paramount Rai, Suzu Yu, and the Chubby Buns Burgers, guys. Until next week or any other time we're broadcasting here on SimSpeed TV, have a good one, folks. Stay, keep yourself safe, and uh, have a, uh, we'll hopefully see you back next week for round number six and get this second half of the season underway. Until then, my name is Daniel Yeaman, and bye for now. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Racing isn't easy.